back to our webinar tonight. We are doing a webinar on green spring cleaning with natural essential oils and how to keep your house clean and naturally healthy and free of all kinds of stuff. So um, really quick, uh, please don't copy my slides or my information. And I'm not uh, a doctor, so I don't di diagnose, prescribe, treat, or cure anything. This information that you're getting tonight is for informational purposes only. Uh, just really quick, before we jump into this webinar, I want to make you aware of our webinar next month, which is on April 6th, and it is an amazing webinar on your chakras. Your chakras are your body's energy centers, and we're going to talk about what they are, what they do, and how you can help balance and support their function with essential oils. So that's a great webinar. You can web register for that webinar on my website, purifyskintherapy.com. On the calendar and videos page, it's a green button up in the top right-hand corner. And you can register for that webinar there. Uh, and again, that's a free webinar. And really quick, let me introduce myself. I am Holly Draper. I am a certified aromatherapist. I've been studying essential oils for about 14 years now, and I absolutely love them and have a passion for them. I hope you see that during this webinar. And I'm also an herbologist. I use herbs, tinctures, teas, all that kind of stuff. And I also am an energy practitioner and a kinesiologist. And I love and embrace all forms of alternative healing. And I really think they're quite empowering. And so, oh, and I have four cute kids. As you see there, that's my cute little family. I started this company with a skincare line that I formulated all natural skincare that I was very passionate about because I wanted all natural stuff for my own skin. So I formulated stuff for my own skin and that's kind of how this company started was on a natural skincare line. And then people would come to me and ask all the time, well, which essential oils are you, use, you using? And so because I have access to a higher uh, quality essential oil, I decided to bring on a line of essential oils. And that's how this company was kind of started. So our oils are USDA certified organic and wild crafted. Those are the two highest grades of essential oils and those are the only two grades that we carry. Now I didn't wanna start just another essential oil company. Um, what our mission is to be the very best. We want to be the very best, the highest quality USDA certified organic and wild crafted essential oils available. And if you've ever bought any of our oils or you buy one or two of our oils and try them and compare them to any other oils you ever used, we believe you'll see a difference. So uh, we're going to talk about the oils a little bit a little bit later and actually how to tell good, amazing, high quality essential oils from lower grade oils and what that entails. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But let's jump into our topic, spring cleaning with essential oils. So really quick, let me turn on my slides here and get them going. All right, so let's get on to green spring cleaning with essential oils. Oops, sorry, my clicker went off. Okay, so I'm sure all of us have a cupboard full of cleaners in our home. And though they're fantastic to get our house nice and clean, they actually are not so great for our bodies. And so with tonight's presentation is talking about how we can use healthier things to clean our home and get it just as clean without harming our bodies. Now, the problem with typical cleansers is that it's well known that they're full of harmful and toxic chemicals. Uh, typical household cleaners are dangerous to your health when you use them. They're dangerous to your children's health and your pet's health by being around them and they're harmful to the environment. It's interesting, this is a fact from the Norwex company. Uh, they say the average home has 65 different chemicals in everything from products to personal care items sitting around the home. People use different chemical products to clean their windows, another for their floors, another for their sinks, stainless steel faucets, the toilets, their marble countertops, or to polish their furniture. Those canisters and bottles of cleaning agents can emit chemicals into the breathing air of your home even when you have the, bo the those bottles tightly capped. So air inside the home because of these chemicals is 70 times more toxic than pollution laden air outside your home. 
70 times, which translate which translated means living the living environment inside your home is two to five times more polluted than outside your home. Uh, and it just interesting facts. I mean, we could teach a whole class on uh, the problems with chemical cleaners in our home. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm not going to go too much into that. But it's just interesting some of these facts. There have been 80,000 synthetic chemicals developed since World War II. Less than 5% of them have been tested by the EPA. All of this chemical exposure can be linked to a rise of chronic illness and even to sharp upswing in cancer statistics and infertility. There's one that is especially uh, very harmful for us to have in our environments, and they're the phthalates. Now, phthalates are known as plasticizers, compounds used in the production of plastics to help make them soft and pliable. They're also used in many cosmetics and personal care products as fragrance. Phthalates are so widely used in consumer products. They are like in everything, in so many products, that exposure to these chemicals is universal except in the most primitive cultures. Phthalates are considered to be endocrine disrupting chemicals. And some of you know what that means. Endocrine disrupting chemicals or EDCs. Phthalates are used in cosmetics, perfumes, and fixatives, aerosols, paints, lotions, air fresheners, shampoos, conditioners, lubricants, medications, medical bags, and tubing, anti-foaming agents, skin emollients, nail polish, false fingernails. The list goes on and on and on. And they are not required to list be listed in the ingredient list. Yikes. So even if they're in a product, they don't necessarily show that they're on, on the label. And they can often be disguised under, under the term fragrance in many, many products. Phthalates are xenoestrogens foreign to the body uh, that often act as estrogens once ingested or absorbed into the body. And these EDCs interfere with normal horm hormone function and metabolism in the body. Conditions associated with EDCs include infertility, decreased sperm count, breast cancer, endometriosis, prostate cancer, ovarian cancer, asthma, allergies, obesity, and infertility. This chemical that is in so many products that we buy all the time and are in our home are, is causing a lot of problems. Uh, phthalates are used m most often in as fragrance in air fresheners. The phthalates are what's used in them to increase their longevity and their tenacity of the, of the fragrance. Uh, and so in, and if it says fragrance in the ingredient list, most likely there are phthalates in that product. So, I mean, we could go on and on, teach a whole class about that, but let's move on to a healthier cleaning solution. Uh, why? Because we want to get away from those toxic chemicals that most people use all day long in their homes. So let's talk about how essential oils can clean our homes and make them just as clean and fresh and wonderful smelling and yet with no uh, you know, harsh, harmful, toxic side effects. Essential oils are cheaper or less expensive than your over-the-counter uh, cleaning agents. They promote your health when using them. They're healthy for your children and your pets, and they're better for the environment. Yay for essential oils. So I have a list here of my favorite essential oils that I use for cleaning. We have a blend called Clean and Clear that I'm going to talk about in just a minute. We have a, uh, we're going to talk about tea tree, lavender, lemon, eucalyptus globulus, uh, lemongrass, scotch pine, and tangerine. Those are my top eight cleaning essential oils that I think are so very valuable in cleaning. Now, just a note, when you, there's so much stuff about aromatherapy and essential oils on the internet. But I'm going to tell you that you don't use hot oils for cleaning. Uh, hot oils include oregano, cinnamon, and clove bud. Those are hot oils that when they get on your skin, they can actually uh, be sensitizing and become hot on your skin. You don't use these because they can actually hold to your children and your pets. So if, especially if you have kids and pets, you don't want to be using these oils to clean your home uh, because it's just better to be safe when you can use other the other essential oils that I listed and get absolutely the same results without risking any harm. Uh, and so we don't use hot oils for cleaning our homes. So again, these are the oils that I'm going to talk about tonight that I think are fantastic for cleaning, and I'm going to give you lots of different recipes. And so let's talk about lemon oil is an amazing cleaning oil 
both for your home and for your body. It just does so many things. There, this is a quote by Dr. Jean Valnet, French medical doctor, and he says, lemon essential oil is second to none in its antiseptic and bactericidal properties. One of the other uh, oils we have on our list is tea tree essential oil. Tea tree is my favorite disinfecting oil for just about anything that becomes infected or you want to disinfect. <laughs> and so tea tree essential oil is one of the best disinfecting oils in the world. It's just one of the very top ones uh, for this, and yet very, very gentle, very safe uh, for ev most everyone. Lemongrass essential oil is on our list also, and it's extremely antiseptic too, which means it's effective against pathogens. Even in very high dilution, lemongrass is extremely antiseptic. Eucalyptus globulus was also on our list. It's again, essential oil highly disinfecting, antiseptic, and all of these essential oils, to some degree, as you use them, stimulate your immune system and, and are, are actually quite healthy uh, for lots of systems and things in your body. So it's so great to use these. The other oils on my list are lavender, scotch pine, and tangerine. I bet you can think of two or three different cleaning, uh, over-the-counter cleaning clean, cleaners, I guess, that you can buy that are flavored or scented in pine scent, right? Because pine is such a good cleaning scent, fragrance. Uh, it's fresh and it's a good sanitizer. So it that's one that's often used in cleaning, uh, sorry, cleaners that you buy in the store. And also orange or tangerine uh, is a great smell that is often found in over-the-counter cleaners. So I also mentioned a blend in there that called Clean and Clear. And I love blends. Uh, when it comes to aromatherapy, blends are usually always stronger than single oils. And I compare it to, let's say, uh, essential oils are compared to uh, this, this marine, okay? And like I use this when I talk about the immune system too, so it makes a better example, but stay with me here. <laughs> if my house was being invaded by zombies, like, you know, uh, like say the flu or a cold or some bacteria or viral infection, okay? Uh, I would want a very highly armed, very talented marine to help me guard my home or my body, right, against those zombies or those pathogens that's coming to invade it. But if given the choice, I would actually choose to have a squadron of Army, Navy, Air Force, and the Marines protecting my house, wouldn't you, right? So I compare this to essential oils. When you take a blend of essential oils, the blends have the power, the energy, the synergy, all the phytochemicals from the different botanical plant families, and the healing and disinfecting power of all the oils that they contain. So blends are stronger because they contain more of the phytochemicals, of the synergy. I love using blends. And so we actually formulated this clean and clear blend. And look at the oils that it contains. Tea tree, lemon, lemongrass, Eucalyptus globulus, Eucalyptus citriodora, black spruce, cypress, scotch pine, sage, juniper berry, frankincense, and thyme chemotype linalool. These are really great oils, and this blend is very synergistic. It's like uh, taking essential oil cleaning to the next level with this blend of essential oils. Smells amazing, very kind of citrus lemony fresh, and yet it's got all those beautiful smells in it. This is a fantastic smelling blend, too. So it's antiseptic, so it kills pathogens, it's disinfecting, it's formulated to be a powerhouse cleaning blend. That's what this blend was made, made to do. And it's energetically clearing because of the essential oils used in this blend. And I'm going to explain more about that toward the end of this webinar, energetically clearing your home. So with this blend, it's physically cleaning, disinfecting, uh, you can mist it on, and I'm going to tell you exactly how to do this in just a minute. So just giving you an idea how you can use this blend in your home. You can mist it on at, uh, to disinfect countertops. You can mist it on to disinfect door handles, toilet handles, anything you touch, toilet seats, anything you touch. Very antifungal, cleans mold, and it's great for fungus in the home. You can actually drop a couple drops of this into your dishwasher when you run your dishwasher, and it will sterilize your load of dishes. You can also drop a couple drops of this into your clothes washer when you wash clothes, and it will also sterilize your clothes. It's super clean and fresh smelling. Uh, and again, this is the oil that you also use to energetically clear your house for space clearing. And I'm actually going to tell you how to do that at the end of this, the, this physical cleaning your house. 
I'm going to show you how to energetically clean your house too. So with the Clean and Clear blend, as with um, kind of all these blends that we're talking about cleaning your house, you can the application would be diffusion, so you can put it up into the air. You can mist it on counters and, and hard surfaces in your home. You can make homemade cleaners, which I'm just about to give you the recipes for. You can make antibacterial wipes, which is one of the recipes you're getting tonight. You can energy clear your home, space clear your home, and you can substitute this blend. I'm going to give you all kinds of options and combinations of these oils to use in cleaning your home, but you can you substitute any uh, of the blends or combinations of the single oils for this blend. Does that make sense? And so you can use this blend in any of the recipes that I'm going to give you tonight. Other things that you're going to need for cleaning your home are cobalt uh, blue glass misting bottles. And I'll uh, talk to you about those two and how to what we're going to use those for for cleaning. Okay, so I'm going to give you 15 recipes tonight. I know it's a ton of recipes, and I've tried and uh, all of these in my live classes when I teach this class, you know, in person. I actually make all these recipes right in front of the class, and I package them up and give them away to people who come to my classes. And so I'm sad that we can't do it that way tonight, but we have to do the best we can. <laughs> but you are getting all of these recipes, antibacterial wipes, antibacterial spray, window glass and stainless steel cleaner, which is one of my favorite recipes in this whole class, air fresheners, liquid dish soap, floor cleaners, a soft scrub, which is my next favorite recipe I use all the time, toilet bowl cleaner, all-purpose cleaner, like a 409 kind of type similar to that kind of cleaner, uh, a dishwasher detergent, a laundry detergent, a laundry detergent for sensitive skin, fabric softener, carpet deodorizer and disinfectant, and carpet stain remover. Wow, right? Yes, you're getting all of those amazing uh, recipes, the natural, completely healthy, natural version of them to keep your home clean and green and super, super healthy for everyone involved. <laughs> all right, so let's jump on to our very first recipe. Um, and I am going to tell you that at the end, I'm going to actually... Uh, offer you that I have written all of these out for you. So if you don't feel like writing all of them out, I do have a card with all of these, all of the recipes on it. So um, that might, may save your hand. We have homemade healthy antibacterials. So you take two cups warm water, paper towel, roll, high quality. I always use Bounty. I've tried all different brands, but you want it to be able to stay together. And when you pull them, you don't want them to fall apart, you know, or, you know, break apart because they're kind of moist. So I always use Bounty, and I've never had a problem with them. Then, of course, uh, essential oils. So you need, I use in this recipe lemon, lemongrass, and tea tree essential oil, or I use 15 drops of the Clean and Clear blend, which they both of these blends smell amazing when you make them up. You need an, an empty jar and a, a container for the wipes. And any container will work. I've seen it done all kinds of ways. What you do is you cut the paper towel in half, you can see this is a paper towel cut in half, like the long way you lay it down so it's the long way and cut it right in half. So you only are using half at a time, and you put the paper towel in a container. And um, I even like to use, if you get the like the Clorox wipes at the store, if you've ever got those, save the containers or ask your neighbors for those empty containers. I wash them out really, really good, and I put the empty the paper towel roll right down inside of those. Because I like the lid, you know, how you can pull them out one at a time. I like that. But any container will work. So what you do to make this recipe is you uh, combine all the ingredients. So you combine the wa warm water and the essential oils in a glass jar. Then you shake it up really, really good in the glass jar. Then you're just going to pour that water, warm water and essential oils over the paper towel in the container. Then I usually just shake it a little bit, and the the water goes is, is absorbed right into that paper towel really quickly, and then that's it's that easy. You've just made wipes. It's so so easy, and they work so good. Then once it's all wet, because you poured that water on top of it, you can pull that middle uh, cardboard core of the paper towels right out of the middle once it's wet, and then you pull them from the middle. You can see in this top picture up here, you pull them from the middle up here out and you use them up and they are so great and they work so great you can go around your house and wipe off door handles cupboard handles light switches railings toilet handles toilet seats 
Anything that hands touch, these are just great cleaning, disinfecting wipes that work really, really well. Now I'm going to show you a disinfecting spray. And you can, it, it's, this is just a slightly different recipe. In four ounces warm water, you want to drop five drops of lemon, five drops of tea tree, and five drops of lavender. Or, this is just another option for you, you can use in that same four ounces of warm water, 15 to 20 drops of the clean and clear blend in this, in this amazing spray recipe that I use all the time. So you just add, it. this is when we're going to use one of those cobalt blue glass misters. You put the water in there and the essential oils in there and you shake it up. You want to shake it before each use because essential oils and oils and water separate and the essential oils will float to the top. So shake it up really good and then this is a really great healthy antibacterial spray that you can mist on all of your hard surfaces, your countertops. I let it sit on there, you know, I'll go around and spray my countertops, spray doorknobs, door handles, toilet handles, all that kind of stuff. Let it sit on there, you know, for a minute or so, you know, so the essential oils can do their thing. Then I'll just take a paper towel and go around and wipe it all up. And it's such a great way to clean and disinfect and it's, it smells fantastic. This is the window glass and stainless steel cleaner recipe that is phenomenal, that it does not streak. It cleans windows and stainless steel amazingly, and you can make it right in your own home for pennies as to what you pay for cleaners in the store. In the store, so in that uh, glass spray bottle, in a four-ounce glass spray bottle. Oh, sorry, not in the blue ones. You would need a slightly bigger one for this, and I'm going to actually give you a, an option in just a minute on what you can use. So you will combine four ounces. Oh, sorry, two ounces of white vinegar, two ounces of water. And then you're going to drop 6 to 12 drops of the clean, clean and clear blend. Or you can, you can really scent it any way you want. It's you know limited only by your imagination. <laughs> you can put lemon oil in there. You can put lavender oil in there. Any citrus like the tangerine, orange, uh, bergamot is a great one. Lemongrass smells fantastic and fresh. If you've ever smelled our USDA certified organic lemongrass, it's quite fresh and amazing tea tree for the disinfecting qualities. You can use any single oil that you like or any combination of these oils. They all mix pretty well together. Well, some, yeah, they, they do. <laughs> or you can just use the clean and clear blend in any of these recipes because that's what it's for. Then you put two drops of a liquid dish soap in that too. You put it in an empty gla jar, glass jar, and you shake it really, really good. And with a funnel, then you can Put it in one of those blue glass misters if you choose to and use that to spray. Again, you can. it's for glass, any glass anywhere in your home, uh, mirrors, windows, and anywhere in your kitchen where you have stainless steel works phenomenal. The, it does smell a little vinegary, but uh, it's still amazing, amazing cleaner. Uh, and you can also use that on your countertops if they're like granite. Uh, you can use that one too. So let's talk about a healthy uh, homemade air freshener in that four ounce blue glass bottle you would put three to four ounces of water I don't fill it all the way full because I want a little headroom at the top of air so that when I shake it together you know I know it's getting shaken up really well so into that three to four ounces of water I put 15 to 20 drops of your favorite essential oils and you can really create a mister of any scent you like you can use the clean and clear blend you can use lemon orange lemon and orange any citrus, lemon, orange, and tangerine, wouldn't that smell amazing? Lavender, peppermint, eucalyptus, uh, any combination you want uh, of the good cleaning oils to make this healthy air freshener. Uh, one, one way you can use this is you can put one of these in the bathroom after people use the restroom. It helps freshen the air. You can mist this around any room at any time just for a really fresh spray. Um, you, there's lots of ways you can use this, and I'll, I'll talk more ways about how to use that. You can make a healthy liquid dish soap, which this is a phenomenal recipe, works really, really well. One and a half cups hot water with three-fourths cup liquid Castile soap. Into that you put two tablespoons white vinegar, two tablespoons Arm & Hammer Super Washing Soda. You buy that in the, uh, the laundry aisle of your grocery store. And 25 drops of essential oils, and it can be any flavor you like. If you want peppermint dish soap, if you want lemon dish soap, orange dish, orange dish, dish soap, <laughs> a scotch pine dish soap, wouldn't that smell yummy? Uh, or the clean and clear blend, lavender, 
you can just get super creative and use any uh, blend you like on that. You want to combine the washing soda in the hot water and, and dissolve that up. And then add in all the other ingredients and you just kind of whisk that together. You allow it to cool and you just start, pour it with a funnel into any soap dispensing container, like, like something like this. I like the glass version because, of course, it has essential oil in it. But because there's such a small amount of essential oil in it, you can get away with using the plastic version of like a pump, you know, a foaming pump container. I like these because then when you pump it out, it's always foamy, and I just prefer these. But even just the regular, you know, soap squirting kind of container, you can use those too. So here's a healthy uh, floor cleaner to clean your floors. You combine one and a half cups of water, one and a half cups of white vinegar, eight drops of a liquid dish detergent. You can even use your homemade dish detergent that you just made. I do when I make these for my live classes. I use the dish detergent that I just made. And then you put in 15 drops of the clean and clear or any essential oil. Uh, again, lavender, scotch. Think you could put scotch pine in this because think usually uh, floor cleaners kind of smell like scotch pine. That's what kind of comes to my mind. Lemon, citrus, tangerine, tea tree, lemongrass, peppermint, eucalyptus, globulus, any scent that you like or any combination of those that you like. Uh, I, and and so then you, again, put this in a glass jar, like a quart jar, put on the lid. You shake it, shake it, shake it. And you can put this in a, a spray bottle and you spray it over your floor and then kind of dry mop it around. And you can also use it with a traditional mop. But it's fantastic. Cleans your floors, leaves fresh, lovely scents, um, and works really well. I have lots, lots more recipes, but hang on. Really quick, I'm going to take a little break. And I want to talk about how to tell good essential oils because now the market is so flooded with so many essential oils. Uh, it so blows my mind. But sadly, most of the essential oils on the market are not really high-grade ones, even though every company who sells essential oils wants you to think that their oils are the best. So I'm actually going to show you what to look for if you want the, the very best essential oils out there. I'm going to show you how you can tell the difference for yourself and you don't have to ask anybody else, okay? So when it comes to essential oils, just know that they are not all the same. They do not come from the same uh, farm. <laughs> I had one person ask me that once and I just kind of looked at them. <laughs> uh, no, they're very, very different. They come from all over the world, from all different places, and the quality of them varies greatly, all the way from very, very poor quality almost unrecognizable essential oils, all the way up to really, really high-grade, medicinal, really good quality essential oils. The problem is most essential oils on the market are in this mid, mediocre to good grade of quality. And so how does one person tell? Because it is so confusing out there. So I'm going to show you. If you want the best essential oils, you want to look for organic oils. And let me tell you why this word means more when it comes to the quality of your essential oil than any other word, okay? And let me ask you a question about organic and, and, and think about this. Why do people want to use organic products? Now I'm going to give you just a minute to think about that. Why do people want to use organic products? When I ask this question in my classes, usually a hand goes right up and they go, avoid all the toxins, you know, the toxic pesticides, herbicides. That's exactly right. The number one reason why people use organic products is to avoid exposure to these toxic chemicals, pesticides, insecticides, larvicides, herbicides, chemical fertilizers, sewage sludge, all these toxic chemicals that are poured in billions and billions of pounds in America alone every year on our soil. There's a lot of these very toxic and poison chemicals being poured on. I'm not going to read all of this. There's more information about all this on my website if you want to read more about that. But that's the number one reason people want to use organic products because they don't have these uh, chemicals in them. Once these chemicals are sprayed on the plant, certainly the farmer doesn't want to get them anywhere near his, his skin. Once they're sprayed on the plant, it's impossible to remove it. Once it's sprayed on the plant, it is part of the plant. And once those plants are harvested and distilled, 
that those toxins also come through into the essential oil. In fact, there's a quote by Robert Tisserin, and he says, there are over 400 chemical biocides, pesticides, or herbicides that might be used on aromatic plants, and many of these do carry over during the steam distillation process. The products of cold-pressed citrus oils are even more likely to retain any biocides. So it's really important that when it comes to essential oils, you're getting the really clean organic ones. Understand that the phytochemicals in essential oils are 70 to 100 times more concentrated in the oil than they are in the plant. This happens during the distillation process. So that's why with aromatherapy we use drops of essential oil because we're getting such concentrated phytochemicals in that oil. And that's why it's so important that there's, that there's not very concentrated pesticides in that essential oil. It looks like this. This is a non-organic essential oil and this is an organic essential oil where there are traces of pesticides, herbicides, insecticides, and chemical fertilizers concentrated up to 100 times in non-organic oil, essential oils. They, they're not because those chemicals are not sprayed on organic produce. So it, it makes a really big difference when you look at it this way. When you look at this chart, you say, oh, okay, I see. Uh, and I say to you, which one do you want to choose to put on your baby? Of course, you're going to choose, okay, I want the organic oil if I'm putting it on myself or my children, right? So the second reason why people use non-organic products is because they, they sorry, organic products are non-GMO, which means they're not genetically modified on, and nobody's messed with the plant's DNA, their heirloom, if you will. So they're not genetically modified, which many of you know that can cause problems. The third reason people use organic products is they're uh, cruelty-free, they're not tested on animals. The fourth reason people use organic products is to do your part in reducing pollution, the amount of pesticides, insecticides, larvicides, and other toxic biocides used on our planet and Mother Earth. And it protects our water, soil, and planet when you choose organic. The fifth reason is it protects our ecosystem. Chemical abstinence in farming preserves and protects wildlife, insects, frogs, birds, worms, and other soil organisms so they can play their part in the delicate balance of our ecosystem. And the sixth reason, and this is really important when it comes to essential oils, plants grown without being sprayed with these toxic pesticides, insecticides, larvicides, biocides, artificial chemical fertilizers, and toxic chemicals. They're healthier plants. Surprise, surprise, they're healthier. Their vibrational qualities are much stronger and they are better therapeutic uh, for you know, essential oils. So their essential oils for therapeutic use and healing should be certified organic or wild crafted, which are not sprayed. Wild crafted plants are not sprayed either. So organic pr uh, produce produces better essential oils. And your only way to tell if your essential oils are really organic is to look and see if they're USDA certified. It's not just me trying to tell you this. Uh, internationally, this is a really well-known fact that organic oils are a higher quality. These are quotes by really famous international people. This is Dr. Jean Balnet, <clears throat> excuse me, French medical doctor, world-renowned aromatherapist. And he says, you must obtain an organic certification for citrus oils if they are to be used internally at all because they're a higher grade, right? This is Shirley Price. She's an English aromatherapist, and she says, organic plants are grown without the use of chemicals. When taking oils internally, it's important to use only those of certified organic quality because they're a higher quality, right? And this is a quote by Dr. Schnellbaugh, a German aromatherapist, and he says, lemon oil is non-toxic provided it's organic or free of pesticides. It's very important to use only organic lemon oil as all citrus oils are cold-pressed and if there are pesticides on the pill, they will directly flow into the essential oil. It is therefore, oh, sorry, my phone is talking to me. Oh, it was Siri. She heard me. <laughs> Siri turned on and answered my question. Sorry about that. Um, sorry, I was halfway through this. If there are pesticides on the pill, they will directly flow into the essential oil. It is therefore crucial that lemon oil and all other citrus oils, especially when used for therapeutic purposes, comes from organic cultivation. So understand, organic oils are always higher quality than non-organic essential oils. What you want to look for is that they're USDA certified organic, so you know that they're being verified by a third party, which is the government USDA, right, is verifying that they're actually organic. That's what you want to see. 
So here's a quiz to test your knowledge of what I just talked about. Is this essential oil organic? So I'm going to show you what's written on the label and you guys think in your mind and think yes or no. Is this an organic essential oil if the label says 100% pure therapeutic grade? Now a lot of people out there actually think the word therapeutic grade on there means that it's organic. But what do you think? Does that mean organic? What about this? What about if it says certified pure therapeutic grade? Does that mean it's organic? Nope. It doesn't. That is not an organic oil. Let's see if this is an organic oil. If it says on the label 100% pure USDA certified organic premium grade. USDA. And you see the symbol. Yes, that is an organic oil. That's what you want to look for. That's how you can tell for yourself without having to ask anyone else. Is this an organic oil? Don't even ask them. Just look right on the label. So here's how you tell if your bottle of essential oil is organic. You want to look right on the label. First of all, right here you want to see right on the main uh, label right here, you want to see it say organic. Then the next thing is you want to see the USDA seal on the side. Then on the ingredient list, you also want to see certified organic in the ingredient list. And if it has it in all three places, you're pretty much assured that is an organic oil. And that uh, this these are our labels. So that's what you see on our labels. If the word organic or wildcrafted is not on the label, then what you're holding in your hand is a non-organic essential oil. And there will be traces of pesticides, herbicides, insecticides, and chemical fertilizers in that oil concentrated up to 100 times. So no matter what that company is telling you, even if they say ours are the highest grade, if it doesn't say organic on the label, then you will know they're not. And that's your way to tell. Cleaner, healthier plants produce cleaner, healthier essential oils. And knowing what I know, studying essential oils for 14 years now, when you use a higher grade oil, you use less and you get better healing response in the body. And so it's just it's just absolutely worth it. Now that's what makes our our line of essential oils different. Purified skin therapy are all USDA certified organic or wild crafted essential oils. Uh, and these are very, very potent, very powerful. And we believe with one smell, you can smell the difference. And this is where in my live class, I pass around my, a bunch of different brands of oils, including mine, and people smell them and they can smell the difference and they are pretty amazed. And when you smell the difference, it really makes a big deal. So I wish I could pass them around and you guys could smell them right now. But please, if you haven't tried these oils, buy one or two essential oils that you really love and, and try them. You'll see a difference. Okay, back into our recipes. This is one of my favorite recipes. I actually love this one. I use it all the time. It's a healthy soft scrub cleanser. You know, to scrub around your bathtub, around your sink, in your bathroom, around your kitchen sink. And it's so good and easy to make, and it works so well. Take a quarter cup of baking soda, one tablespoon liquid dish soap, and you can use the one that you made in that earlier recipe. One tablespoon or so, I do just right around a tablespoon of white vinegar. And then you add, mix that up, and then add in six to 10 drops of the clean and clear blend or any essential oil. Remember, if you love the smell of tangerine, then put you know 10 drops of tangerine in there. If you love the smell of lavender, use lavender. You know, uh, If you want it scotch pine flavored, so your whole bathroom smells like scotch pine, use scotch pine. So use whichever essential oils you you like and I love that because you can just create the, the natural healthy recipes that you love and flavor them or scent them any way that you choose and I love that and it's all natural. So with that again you want to just mix those ingredients into a paste and you use a small amount with either a rag or a toothbrush and you scrub around uh, the area that needs scrubbing, countertops, bathtubs, sinks, if, faucets, etc. Whatever uh, you clean you can use this. It's really great. Here's a healthy toilet bowl cleaner. Take one cup of white vinegar. Now don't combine these, okay? One cup of white vinegar, one cup of baking soda, and you want 20 drops of the clean and clear essential oil blend or whichever other blend you want to use. Now with the toilet bowl cleaner, what you do is you add the essential oils to the pre-measured vinegar in, in a cup, right? You add the essential oils to there. Now you're gonna take a dry cup of baking soda, put the seat up, and you're going to sprinkle that baking soda into the bowl of your toilet all around the edge. And of course, it will float down to the bottom. Sprinkle that in there. Then you're going to pour the vinegar with the essential oils in it slowly into the bowl. And it will foam and fizzle. Think 
you know, uh, elementary school science project volcano. <laughs> yes, it will foam and fizzle, and, but that kind of eats away at the dirt and the residue on your toilet bowl. And the essential oils, of course, are very, very disinfecting. You want to let that sit for 15 to 20 minutes. Then you just take your toilet, toilet scrubber and wipe it out. And wow, amazing and so healthy for you. I used to hate to clean the toilet because I hate the uh, smell of the chemical toilet bowl clean chemical toilet bowl cleaner that you buy at the store. It, oh, I just hate the smell of it, but this is so lovely and it doesn't have that. Now this is another recipe for an all natural, all natural, sorry, natural all purpose cleaner. It's similar to like a 409 spray that you would use around the house. This is a natural version of it. So take one teaspoon of borax, which you can also buy in the grocery aisle of your grocery store, one cup of hot water, one half cup of hydrogen peroxide, six drops of a liquid dish soap, which you can again use the one that you made, and 20 drops of clean and clear or any essential oil blend that you love. And you want a separate spray bottle of white vinegar, okay, that you want separate. And I found when I mix this up, I like to keep them in glass bottles because of the essential oils in the mix. So I go and buy these white vinegar bottles at Walmart. They're super, super cheap. It's like less than a dollar, I think, for this. Uh, Heinz vinegar at Walmart and I will use the white vinegar in it in my cleaning recipes and then I'll keep that glass empty bottle because guess what you know those plastic uh, spray bottles that you buy at the store that are kind of cheap but they have that big sprayer top at the top those will screw right onto the top of these glass bottles I know right it's one of my best cleaning tips and I'm giving it to you so uh, use save these empty glass bottles Put your cleaning solutions in these with a little spray lid like this is what I put my floor mix into when I clean my floors. But you can um, use these bottles as well as the white vinegar as you can see we're using a lot of that too. So you add the borax, borax sorry, to hot water and you completely dissolve it in there. Then you want to add in your hydrogen peroxide, your dish soap and essential oils. As you can see these are really really easy uh, recipes to make. Then you want to put it in a glass jar. You want to shake it vigorously with a lid on, shake it up really, really good, and then pour into this spray bottle. And then, of course, you're going to shake it before each use because, again, water and oil separate and the essential oils will float to the top. So you want to shake it before each use. So you can use this all-purpose cleaner, and you can also use a separate bottle of just plain white vinegar, and it kind of boosts it. But you spray them separately from different bottles. So one spray of this all-purpose cleaner and a spray of white vinegar and then you'd scrub it and, and that is a really, really good cleaner. This is a homemade dishwash detergent which is quite phenomenal. It's one cup of borax, one cup of washing soda, again the washing soda and borax you buy in the laundry detergent aisle of your grocery store, one fourth cup of coarse salt, 10 drops of lemon essential oil, 10 drops of tea tree essential oil, 10 drops of eucalyptus globulus essential oil, or just another option, you can use 30 drops of the premix clean and clear blend. Smells fantastic, fresh, and it definitely will do the job to help clean and disinfect your dishes. You combine all the dry ingredients together, you mix it well, add in the essential oils, and you mix them really good into this dry. It's a powder, right? You want to store it in a tightly closed container, and then you add one tablespoon to your closed compartment and a half a tablespoon to the open compartment in your dishwasher. And it's your dish soap. Uh, it's a it's a powder form, but it's it, it's phenomenal. You want to try that and check it out. It gives you about 20 dish loads. These are the containers that I use to put the dish detergent and the laundry detergent in. Any of these plastic containers, as long as they have a lid. When I do my classes, I use these Glad ones. I love them. And then you just put them in and and put the lid on, and I give them away in my classes. They work really well to hold them to. You could make because these recipes kind of make a lot and you could you know keep them under your sink or you could give them away as gifts think of that in these cute containers you know with a little note on how to use them these are all natural what a great idea I know right I'm giving you guys my best ideas <laughs> alright so here is the recipe for your homemade healthy laundry detergent you want one bar of Felsnaphtha soap again you're gonna buy that in the laundry detergent aisle of your grocery store two cups of super washing soda, two cups of borax, 10 drops of lemon essential oil, 10 drops of eucalyptus globulus essential oil, or alternatively you can pretty much combine any ones you want, 
but you can also use 20 drops of the premix clean and clear blend uh, to that now this is the borax this is what it looks like uh, when you buy them in your detergent aisle of your grocery store this is the super washing soda the borax and the felsnaphtha soap so this is what you're looking for and then what you want to do these are the directions you microwave your fel felsnaphtha bar for 30 to 60 se seconds just to soften it up then you're going to on your uh, chopping board with a big knife chop it up into pieces put it in your food processor yes I know it's kind of awesome and cool, but you want to pulse that until it's cornmeal in texture, you know, and then add the other dry ingredients in there one cup at a time and keep pulsing it in your food processor. Then add in the essential oils and blend it up and put it in your containers and seal it. You add two tablespoons to each load of laundry and it makes about 40 to 50 loads. And again, you store it in those uh, airtight containers with the lids that I just showed you and they're phenomenal to use. Here's a healthy laundry detergent for sensitive skin. So it's just slightly different. Instead of use, using the Fels Napa soap, you want to use a bar of ivory soap, uh, two cups super washing soda, two cups borax, and again, 10 drops of lemon, 10 drops of lavender essential oil, and or again, you can use the clean and clear blend or any other options, tea tree, tangerine, scotch pint, whichever you want. You want to microwave your ivory soap for 60 to 90 seconds and it actually puffs up if you've never seen it it's so cool it puffs puffs up like a huge cotton ball and it's awesome my kids just like to see it do it <laughs> and it's really brittle when you touch it it'll just break apart you put two cups of washing soda in your food processor and add that ivory soap all broken up you mix it in really well and then add two cups of borax and blend again and finally, add in your desired essential oils, at least 20 drops, and mix again. Again, store in an airtight container. Use two tablespoons per load of laundry. Works really well. Here's a fabric softener idea. You take a half to a fourth a cup of white vinegar and drop into that 10 drops of the clean and clear blend. I love clean and clear blend because when it comes out of laundry, it smells so fresh, like just a freshness that is natural and it I just it's amazing if you've never smelled it it's quite amazing uh, but add so you add that you just combine that and you add it to the fabric softener slot or add it to the rinse cycle of, of your wash takes out this this fabric softener takes out smell of laundry if it's you know if you forgot about you were doing laundry and you go and it's the wet clothes have been sitting in your washer for a while I've actually done that imagine that I we're busy moms right <laughs> Uh, but you know if they've been sitting in the washer definitely use this because it takes the smell out of laundry it's great to use with towel sheets blankets etc makes your clothes really fluffy soft and they smell amazing or as an alternative you can actually just drop several drops of the clean and clear blend or any essential oils you like like on a damp dish towel or a damp uh, you know hand towel and throw it into your dryer with a wet load and let it dry and it fragrances your entire load of laundry works really well that way so here's what uh, the last recipe I'm going to give you is the homemade healthy carpet deodorizer and disinfector. So this we're going to use this same recipe for many different uses. So so this is a really really good recipe. It's a, it's a half a cup of borax, a half a cup of the baking soda, and 30 drops of the clean and clear blend. And you mix that all together. You can do it with you you know in a bowl with a spoon, or you can do it in your food processor, whichever way you like better. And of course, the more essential oils you use in this blend, the stronger it's going to smell. So it's kind of up to you. But then what you do is um, you put them together, you add the essential oils in, then you can sprinkle that. It's just a powder form and you can sprinkle that over your carpet and you let it sit on your carpet for 15 minutes or so. And then you go and vacuum that up and it pulls scents and it's so good to clean your carpet and it makes your whole room smell amazing. Borax actually cleans your carpets and carpet bugs and mites are killed by tea tree and lemongrass which are both in the clean and clear blend um, and so you can use any of those great for your carpet now this is the same exact recipe that I just gave you for the de carpet deodorizer you can also use it to make a carpet stain remover so what you want to do is if there's a stain on your carpet <clears throat> excuse me you want to get the stain out as soon as possible you want to pour water on it and throw towels down on it and blot up the spill as much as possible as fast as you can so once you do that and I do it several times because you'd be amazed how much plain water can get out if you do it right away 
Uh, and then you apply this carpet powder liberally to that wet stain and you let it sit on for several minutes as the borax and baking soda soak up the rest of the stain. You can actually let it dry if it gets wet and let just let it sit there until it dry and then just vacuum up the powder and the stain will go with it. Here's another way to use that same recipe as a carpet stain remover for tougher stains. You can mix this carpet powder uh, deodorizer with enough water to just make a paste. Then you want to apply that liberally over the stain, rub it into the stain, kind of you know work it out. You want it, and you can allow it to completely dry. And then what you do is just with your fingertips, you can go and break it up once it's dry into a powder form and just vacuum it up. Isn't that an awesome way to use it? You can also use this same recipe as a mattress deodorizer, disinfectant, and stain remover. So you apply this deodorizer and disinfectant powder liberally to your mattress. Yes, of course, you take off the blankets and sheets, throw them in the washer with some clean and clear, right, and your, your detergent. But then stand on top of your mattress and sprinkle on this powder all over your mattress. Guess what? If any falls on the floor, just vacuum that up and it cleans your floor too, right? Awesome, right? Then once you sprinkle it on, you want to let it sit for 15 to 20 minutes and then get your vacuum. Yes, get your vacuum up on your, your mattress and vacuum it up. The next way you can use this very same recipe is to disinfect your garbage cans. You can sprinkle this deodorizing powder in the bottom of your garbage cans, diaper pails, or directly in fresh garbage bags when, when changing them. It's a great deodorizer to use. As an alternative to that, uh, many people actually just drop essential oils right from the bottle into their garbage can just to uh, freshen it up. That's an option too. And then with this same recipe, the same carpet deodorizer recipe that we gave, it's also great for pet urine, vomit, etc. kind of rougher stains if you will. The first thing you want to do is you want to get the stain cleaned up as soon as possible. Blot the stain up with water as much as you can. Pour water over the area and blot it up again. You want to get as much gunk out of it as you can with just water. And then you want to apply this carpet powder liberally to the wet stain area. Let set for several minutes, 15 to 20 minutes. Remember the borax and the baking soda soak up the rest of the stain and, dis and kind of deodorize it. And the essential oils also are very disinfecting. Let that powder dry completely and then you vacuum it up. Vacuum up the powder and the stain will go with it. All right, so that's all the recipes for that I have. As you can see, you can turn around and Use those amazing recipes and clean pretty much anything in your house. This um, is such great class for people who are very mo uh, motivated to keep their environment in their home very natural. I'm also going to show you right now how to use the Clean and Clear blend as an energetic clear uh, and to space clear your home because that's also that's why I call this blend Clean and Clear because it physically cleans your home like we just talked about and it energetically clears your home, like I'm going to show you. So that's what this blend is for. So to make a clearing spray, this is the same as the air freshener spray that we made earlier. So in one of these cobalt blue mister bottles, you want to put two to three ounces of water and about 20 ounces or, uh, sorry, 20, not ounces, sorry, that was a miss. <laughs> I was looking at the ounces of the water. Let me start over. Two to three ounces of water in one of these cobalt blue mister bottles, 20 or so drops of the clean and clear blend in there. Uh, add all the ingredients, you shake it up every time you use it because again the oils separate out, you want to shake it before each use and you spray it around your home. Now to clean the energy in your home, what I do is I start at the front door and I go up to the ceiling, I mist it up as high as I can reach up toward the ceiling and then I mist it all the way down, you know, just with one spray and I kind of angle it down to the floor. So I start at the door and I go around every corner, every room, every closet. You can clean, you can actually clear your entire house with this. And I've actually cleared houses for clients doing exactly this. But it's so easy to do, but this spray is very powerful energetically to eliminate negative energy. I like to think of it like when your house is completely dark and no lights are turned on at all, and there's darkness in your house and you flip on a light switch and with a single light bulb you light up the entire room, right? I mean not bright, but it lights the entire room. So like I th like to think of that energetically so when I use this spray energetically to clear the house, one spray of this highly energetic clearing oil 
disperses the darkness, disperses that negative energy. And so mist all around your house. Make sure to spray in the corners. Um, negative energy tends to kind of go toward the corners and up in the corner of, of your ceiling. So kind of spray in those areas. You can go around a whole room and just do in the corners and kind of around the room. And it smells so good and fresh. And it just brings such a good energy, such a high frequency, lovely energy to your home. Really works quite amazing. So again, you use the same mister to mist all around your bedroom. And this blend can actually help you sleep better. So if you're not sleeping well at night, and we have lots of clients who do this, they take this same exact mister with a clean and clear in it, mist around your entire bedroom, including all four corners, or if there's more, do more in the closet, but especially mist over your bed. Pull the covers back and mist over your sheets and your pillow. What it does is it clears the negative energy, and it just helps you sleep better. So it works in lots of different ways, lots of options here. And again, you can diffuse any essential oil to freshen any room. That's just another way to use essential oils in your home, you know, to help keep your environment really fresh and clean. You can diffuse any of the essential oils that we talked about into the air. A lot of them, like lemon oil by itself, can, can sterilize air. It's very, you know, lemongrass is great, lavender is great, tea tree is great. The clean and clear blend is great uh, to diffuse. Any of those you can do. Uh, now, we have a pack that I want to show you because this is very exciting of our cleaning pack. So it has all the oils we talked about, the clean and clear blend, tea tree, lavender, lemon, eucalyptus globulus, lemongrass, scotch pine, and tangerine. And of course, our oils are USDA certified organic and wild crafted. To buy this pack, it retails for $147.60. But of course, I'm going to give you a deal, right, for attending the webinar. Absolutely. So we're going to give you $15 off the pack, which makes this pack of eight oils for only $132.60 by using the coupon code GREEN. It's down here at the bottom, and it's kind of in dark writing, so make sure to write this down. Oops. Oh, well. <laughs> so use coupon code GREEN when you check out on our website, and you get 10% off this pack, but that's not all. When you buy this pack, I'm also going to throw in a four ounce glass mister bottle, a blue four ounce glass mister bottle for you. And guess what else? You're gonna so love me. I had to have 10 things in this pack. I'm also gonna throw in the recipe card with all of the 15 recipes I just gave you, all the directions, all the ingredients and instructions, all on a really handy um, reference card that comes with this pack. So with this pack, you can make so many, so many cleaners. Now, I know you're thinking, that's a lot of money for essential oils. It's true. $132 is a lot of money. But when it comes to essential oils, they are so healthy and they're economical. Think about it this way. When you use a couple drops at a time, there's in a 15 mil bottle, which all of these are 15 mils, there's over 300 drops of that essential oil. So you can see when you're making these cleaning products and when you're using them in your home, a very little of essential oil goes a long, long way. So it's quite economical with how much cleaner you can make with this pack. So again, write down that coupon code GREEN and check out our website, The Natural Cleaning Pack. In fact, when this webinar is over, I'm going to pop you right exactly to the, the, the product page of this pack so you can look at it. And, and definitely get that. Now remember, when you get these really superior grade pristine oils, please keep them away from light, heat, and oxygen. These are the things that are destroy your essential oils. So keep them in there. When, when essential oils are stored in cobalt blue bottles, they stay better for longer than, say, if they were in an amber brown bottle because the, the blue actually protects them from the light better. Keep them away from heat sources and, and hot places. Don't leave them in your car in the summer, for example. And oxygen, always keep the lids tightly closed on essential oils, and they will last longer for you. And then here's always just a quick warning everyone should know when using essential oils. If you ever apply an essential oil and it becomes hot on your skin, your, your, sometimes our reflex is to, oh, let's go wash it off with water. But water and oil repel each other, remember, like I've said this entire webinar. So you don't, it can actually cause it to burn hotter. So what you want to do is grab an oil, like extra virgin oil, olive oil out of your kitchen or a carrier oil like uh, organic grapeseed oil and put that oil on top of the burning essential oil. But this is only if it ever burns on your skin, which may never happen, but just so you know how to do it. 
put the oil on top of the area and it stops the burning in seconds. What it does is it slows the absorption of the essential oil so it stops the burning. All right, so for those of you who weren't at the beginning of our class, please put this on your calendars. Next month, April 6th, we're doing the chakra webinar, which is your body's energy centers and how to heal and balance them with essential oils. It's a phenomenal uh, webinar. You want to register on our website. And we, I want to thank everybody so much for attending our webinar. I hope you got great information and took great notes. We will record this and have it on our website if you want to watch it again to get go over those recipes one more time. It will be available on our website at purifyskintherapy.com in a couple days. Awesome. So if you have any questions, please email me at holly at purifyskintherapy.com, and I'm happy to help you any way I can. I'm pr usually pretty good about answering my emails. So please let us know. Let us know what you think about the webinars, and we will see you next month on the webinar on April 6th. Thank you so much for coming. Have a great night.